Hello to my dear congregants, Tzoharayim Tovim. I want to share with you a beautiful insight on Parshat Shlach, which we're going to read this Shabbat. Now we're told about these 12 spies who are sent out to go look at the land. But it's really unclear what is the mission, what is the objective, what is the purpose of these spies. And if you read the Torah's language carefully, we gain some insight. On the one hand, we're told, Shlach Nachan Hashim Viaturu at Eretz Canaan. They should go Latur at the Eretz Canaan. On the other hand, in Sefer Dvarim, the Jewish people mention the following words, Vayiraglu Ota. They should go and appears to mean to, they should spy the land. Other language is also used in the Torah, Viachburu Lanu et Eretz. What is the meaning of these three terms? The Kliakar points out that the Jewish people, Hashem and the Meraglim, had three very different objectives. Uh, leading into this, uh, heading into this, uh, this whole, this whole mission, Hashem were told via Turu at Eretz Canaan. He says, "I want to send spies so that they could see the Yitarona Eretz, the goodness of the land, the bounty of the land, the fruit. You could see the beautiful Matana that I am giving to you, the Jewish people. The Jewish people, on the other hand, and more of a negative uh, intention, they wanted to see the Cherpa, the shame of the land. They wanted to know the negative things. They wanted to know what they were really getting into." What's wrong with this land, they were asking. And that's why they use the language, lanu et lashon cherpa. On the other hand, the Miraglim, they had terrible, sort of wicked, insidious uh, intentions from the outset. They wanted to go liragel. And liragel, Rashi points out, liragel, to spy also means uh, rachil. Rachil is someone who peddles in false truths, someone who peddles in lies, and they were willing to lie about the land. And, uh, and so they had a whole agenda even before, uh, before starting this mission. What do we learn from this? There are many, many lessons here. But there's one idea I want to draw out from here. And that is when people are coming together. It could be an organization. It could be an employer, an employee. It could be a, 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 a nonprofit. It could be a family. It could be in a relationship, whatever it is. It's so important that people share their objectives, their expectations about how things are going to play out. So often we assume that we're on the same page with someone else, that they see the things that we do and they have the same expectations, but they actually have very different ideas of of how things should happen. And it's just so important to talk that out, to have those conversations. It's very important in marriage. It's very important for employers and employees to give clarity about vision and objectives. And that's what's missing here from the story in Parsha Shlach. And we know how it ends. It ends in chaos and ends in 40 more years in the Midbar. So an important lesson from Parsha Shlach. Wishing you a great day. Kol Tuf.